Okay, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Zach Slobin. Um, for those of us that have never connected, I live in beautiful San Diego, uh, La Jolla, California with my wife, Eden. And um, I am really grateful um, and blessed to be able to put together and call in um, a very, very special, very, very pertinent, relevant, important, and in some cases, potentially necessary um, training, if you will, with a person who has had a significant impact on my life. Now, to put it in perspective, again, for those of you guys that don't know me, um, I've been an entrepreneur for a lot of years. Um, I've been an I was an athlete for a long time, so I've had access to incredible mentors and coaches and teachers throughout my life and throughout my career. And in that process, I've learned how to really decipher between who's the real deal and who is um, self-serving. And so please understand that me and that Eden and I publicly promoting this, bringing this person to our communities, to our networks is the ultimate um, show of faith and respect and appreciation for who this person is. And I'm going to share a little bit more about here in a moment. Now, I do want to give a quick disclaimer, and I want you guys to all understand that I know that there are a lot of people from all walks of life watching this. And even though that many of you may have been connected to us through our network marketing company, this is a generic call. This is not specific to any companies. We're not going to talk about any companies or anything along those lines. This is just pure value, no pitch nothing to sell you on. Well, that's not true. We're going to sell you on some ideas and some tools and some principles you might want to implement, right? Beth? Right. We might sell you on those types of things. You might want to buy those, right? You might want to buy those, but um, let me, I'm going to turn the call. I'm going to bring her on in a moment. You guys, you guys saw her name published um, on the flyer that we put out. Um, Beth is a woman who I was first introduced to and Eden and I were first introduced to while we were a part of a, of a master trainer program that was being facilitated by a close friend and mentor, a guy named, uh, named David T.S. Wood. Now, David in his own right is a world-class trainer. And so when he had partnered up with Beth to be the hands-on coach for us becoming master trainers, that was the first thing that got my attention because David has had exposure to incredible, incredible trainers being a world-class trainer himself. So that was the first thing that got my attention. And then the next thing that got my attention was that this woman had the ability to, and the willingness to just cut th straight through the BS. There was no song and dance. There was, let's get to it. Let's get to the root of it. And let's figure out ways how to keep things moving forward. And that was something I, I respected about her early on. And then there came a time where Eden and I found ourselves in a, in a really, in a growing season. Our, our marriage was being stretched. Our business was being stretched, not positively or negatively. It was just being stretched. And when we checked in and we listened and we asked ourselves, who's the right person to guide us right now? It was Beth. It was Beth. And um, to say that that was the right choice for us, would be a gross understatement um, to say that um, to say that we're grateful for the work that she did with us and the tools that we continue to apply because of her influence on our lives in that season, which I think was already five years ago, which just trips me out four or five years ago, which is crazy to me. But to know that we practice so much of what she taught us, and I just want to give you an example right now of what we practice. So one of the things that we've learned to practice, and Beth, I'm going to ask you to expand on this, but one of the third things that we've learned how to, act, how, to, how to practice as a couple is learning how to respect people, how to respect one another's space and one another's processes. Now, originally we had promoted this as Eden and I were going to be hosting, but Eden woke up this morning just not feeling great. And she said, hey, I just don't know that I get to be on the call with Beth today. I think I just get to rest. And something that I learned from Beth is that in my old programming, I would have said, no, you've got to show up. You've got to do this. We put our name on it. It's supposed to be both of us. And I would have driven a really hard masculine energy to make sure that Eden was on the call so that I didn't look bad. But to give you an idea of one of the things that I've learned from Beth was it was more important for me to embrace a softer side, a more feminine side, an understanding side, a compassionate side that said, babe, if you get to have space right now and just rest right now, then that's what, gets, that's what you get to do. If that's what's most loving for you, then that's what's most loving for me. So without further ado, I'm really excited to unmute our coach, our good friend, 
a world changer. Um, Beth Henischewski from Kelowna, BC. And there you are, you're unmuted, Beth. You there? I'm so happy, yeah, I'm here. I'm well, so I'm here. Gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna spotlight you. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, I wash my hair and everything for you guys. So I hope you're happy. It's out of the ponytail, special occasion. You know, Zach asked me to come to the party. So I thought, well, I'll wash my hair. That's my contribution right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Well, thank you for that. So what I've, what I've done, Beth, is I've kind of, based on people's feedback and whatnot, I've kind of broken this down into three oh. categories. Oh, excellent. Okay. I have my... And my notepad, of, my fancy notepad that I've taken every coaching note on this pad. And, um, but again, thank you for, uh, thank you for showing up and being willing to serve in this way. It's just uh, such an important time. Mm -hmm. But before I, before I do that, before I start like asking away, like what's on your heart right now? Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, first of all, thank you. Thank you to, to you for inviting me to be a part of this you know i know that you've been reaching out all last week ever since the world has kind of gone upside down i see you i see you just serving and just saying how can i help how can i help how can i help and um you know when you texted me and just said hey a lot of lots of people are struggling you know could you help would you join me um it was the easiest yes i ever you know ever for me so i thank you zach for the way that you um, just continue to just serve people. I just love you so much. And like I said, it was, it was the easiest ask. And, I, and I'm so blown away um, by all the people who have um, shared this and come here today and are, just want to be a part of it and gather. Um, so I'm just feeling grateful and humbled and honored and inspired to, to really do my part. Anything I can do to help. Right on. Okay, so let's thank you for that. Let's let's dive in. So let's start with let's start with couples and let's start with people who all of a sudden find themselves in a completely new environment, potentially, you know, husband and wives, husband and husband, wife and wife, whatever that domestic partnership looks like. Yeah. For a lot of people might have gone from, you know, being apart from every from each other for 16, 17, 18 hours a day to being with each other 24-7. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe let's start with even the relationship formula, right? Because I know that for us, it's just so fundamental and it's something that we rely on and lean into all the time. So if you could give kind of a, an overview of the, of the relationship formula and then we can kind of spin from there if that works. Yeah, I, I of course. Um, I, you know, and I, I'm going to, I'll jump into that. I just want to say one thing before that. And that is, um, you know, when I first took my coaches training, I was, thinking about this call today and what I wanted to share. And um, I was out for a walk with my dogs, which are where I do my best thinking. And um, I remember my coach's training, which was way back in 2003. I don't know if that makes me sound really wise or very old, but that's when I first took my very first coach's training, which, you know, I've continued to um, do as over the years, but in my, in when you first become a certified coach, for those of you who've been through coach's training, um, they tell you to be careful um, when you do a coaching session or any kind of teaching that every aha is kind of like a scoop of ice cream. And if you give too many scoops of ice cream, your the client can become really overwhelmed. And so, you know, as I start thinking about all these things, I have like a couple of pages of just little notes. That I thought, oh, this, I could share this. I could share this. I could share this. And I realized there's potential right now today for Zach, you and I, and and Eden to serve up a banana split, like a lot of ice cream. So I just want everyone to just take a breath and go, just, just eat, the, eat the scoops that you want. And just know that if you're feeling overwhelmed as we go, it's just because we're just piling on some scoops and um, just bear with us. Because I, I, I'm not gonna hold back the whipped cream today, not. Okay. So, so real quick, Beth, for some reason, I, there's a little bit of a clicking sound coming through. And I don't know if it's your mic. I think it might be your mic banging up against your blouse or against your, or against oh, your okay. computer. Let me see if I can fix that. I'll put my other one in, see if that makes a difference. Okay. Yeah, I think that, I think that was, that yeah, yeah, cause the mic was hitting up against your, Oh, against you know, I get a little animated when I'm talking. It's <laughs> very difficult. You know, I've, every picture I've ever been taken of me speaking or I'm always flapping around. It's, it's I, whatever. Hey, no, I'm, I'm the same. I'm yeah. The same. Anyways. Okay. So 
let's just, let's just dive in. So the first thing I want to say um, for people who are finding themselves in a, in a new environment, and, and this, this pandemic is a new environment for all of us, and we're all just kind of figuring it out as we go. Um, so I, I, you know, I want to just say that the very first thing you, I would invite you to do before I even go into the formula is to choose this first. How do you want, so if we were talking about couples, but it could, this also would be applied to families for your business or anything for that matter. But let, let's say, Zach, you asked me about couples. So for people who are in a relationship, um, how do you want your relationship to feel? I just, want, I just want to begin there. Or how do you want your family to feel right now? And just choose one word. I'm a huge fan of simp you know, simple one word things. Um, yeah, beautiful, safe, right? Maybe you want your family to feel happy. You want your family to feel loved. You want your relationship to feel uh, loving. Uh, yes, beautiful. Yes, grounded, nurturing. Ah, oh, look at the chat. I love this so much. Important, right? Significant, stable, peaceful. This is so beautiful. So I want you to keep that word in mind. You really, we could almost stop the rest of the teaching right now. And I would just say, choose that word, put it everywhere you could see it, put it on your fridge, put it on your bathroom mirror, put it on your laptop, put it on your phone wherever you are, put on your, above your bed and, and just say, that is everything we're going to do. Try to align it with that. Just, just do that. Like right now, I, I, I swear, I feel like we should just hang up. That's it. That's all I got, Zach. Uh, <laughs> hey everybody, thanks for coming out. We hope we yeah. do it. <laughs> One word. <laughs> um, just, be, just, well, just be clear. So, so I, I, and I, I understand what you're saying, but just to, just to kind of like break it down even further. So when you say find that word, because this is a practice that you taught us as well, right? Mm -hmm. When you say find that word and you say place it on your laptop, place it on your, on your, on your, on your bathroom mirror, you mean literally do that, correct? Yes, I yeah. do. Good. I do. Um, cause it's not just, you know, intention is one thing. Um, but there's so much research out there to show how much power there is in the, in the pen, uh, even more than the typing, by the way, power of the pen is to actually write down that word. It, it's activating. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of anything that can activate things. If you're a student of the law of attraction, they're all about activation. So I want you to activate that word in your life right now. What all, oh, and, and your cat, like bring your cat to the call. Yeah, God bless you, Maya, for just, just bringing a little cat love in the, in the day today. Um, so that's what I mean. Write it down because I want that word to be top of mind because it's so easy to just say, oh, I have the intention. It's like having the intention to work out, right? It's much different if you had a big sign that said, move my body today. You might actually move it. You see the difference between just an intention and a word. And then once you have that word, that's when you pair the action. You go, oh, I'm going to take some action today. So Zach, you asked me to teach the relationship formula, which uh, I'm going to. I'm going to kind of to do, do a little bit of an overview. But I, you know, a few years ago, um, made a video series that teaches this whole formula. So I'm going to share that with you, Zach, and you can let everybody know that. Um, it's, it's so easy. You, you have to opt into it. I'm in the spirit of transparency, but if you don't want to stay connected after that, just get the, the series and then opt back out. <laughs> it's, it's all good. Um, so I just want you, I'm telling you that because I don't want you to panic. If you like, Oh, I don't think I get it. Or I'm not sure I understand, or I missed something. Um, I will send you the link to the video series so that you can just sit with it or, and sit with your friends or sit with your family or whoever you're um, social isolating with right now. Okay, so here's the formula. It's um, three things, very, very simple. So the first is E, so E. E is an elephant, E is an echo. If you're good at the uh, alphanumeric um, language, uh, E is an echo, plus V is in Victor, plus C is in Charlie, equals H as in hotel. That's the relationship formula. And I have been teaching this formula for, you know, as long as I, I, well, as soon as I learned it. And the only way I learned it was when I needed it myself. So just to be clear, um, you know, I am not one of these people that just go, oh, 
here's, you should try this. I, I heard it's really great. Um, this formula saved my marriage. 1000 bazillion percent. It saved my marriage um, way back in, you know, 2006 when my husband and I were, as Zach would say, a season, a season of, of stretch. Uh, that would be, I would have been putting it, that would be the understatement of the year, that year, uh, the season of stretch. Um, but we were in a season of stretch and I, you know, learned this and I thought, okay, well, I'm going to try it because I figured I had nothing to lose. And, um, uh oh, the screen just went crazy. Okay. Um, now my face is just extremely huge right now. So I feeling really big. Uh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, so here's the thing. Those three words, those three things that I'm going to share with you are a game changer if you practice them. So I'm going to try to speed it up if I can. So the E stands for energy. Now, when I think of energy or you think of energy, you might think of like happy energy, joyful energy, you know, emotional energy. And that's not the energy I'm talking about here. I'm talking about uh, the masculine and feminine energy. And now no matter what, you know, when I try to be sort of uh, socially correct and politically correct and all the correctness. Um, so this applies to whatever gender you identify with as, as, as if you identify as male or female or um, gender neutral, uh, it doesn't matter because the masculine and feminine are not people. They're groups of characteristics that we associate with a type of energy. So if you, you know, if I said to you, you know, um, you know, in the, in the masculine, right? So if I said to you, um, logical, does that feel masculine or feminine to you? Right? Maybe I should watch the chat well. Yeah, masculine, right? If I said emotional, is that masculine or feminine? Mm. Now, see, someone said both, but you're right. Logical is associated with the masculine. And here's where the slippery slope of, of this you can be a woman and run masculine energy. I, I'm just talking about myself. I'm going to try to stop banging my own microphone. Sorry, Zach. <laughs> um, and you can be a woman and run masculine energy. You can be a man and run feminine energy. You can be gender neutral and run masculine or feminine. This is not about men and women. It's about an energy. It's an energy uh, of, a, of a character group of characteristics. So, Again, we'll get the hang of this as we go. Um, again, I'll, I'll leave you, Jack, Zach, to monitor the chat. Um, so here's the thing. If you had a piece of paper in front of you, so for those of you who want to play along, I want you to do this. Here's, here's where the interactive, I don't know how to teach this without writing it down. I apparently am incapable. I don't know if this is backwards, but it'll be backwards for you. But basically draw a little quadrant, okay? Because this is how I separate the energies into four quadrants, what I would call positive, see, and the negative, or the light, shadow, whatever you want to think of it, um, it, it makes you happy. So like, for example, if I said logical, right, I put that in the masculine light. I, you probably can't, can you read this? Is it backwards when I read it? No? Oh, fantastic. Okay, great. So, and then emotional, would be over here. Uh oh, my pen's running out. Okay, feel them off. More pens. Okay, more pens. Don't worry, everybody. Beth has plenty of pens because Beth is the person that loves office supplies and <laughs> all of the stationary things. So don't worry. No, there is never worry. I have so many pens. Okay, I have a new one. Uh, you're right. Yeah, my friends give me um, gifts to office supplies for my birthday. Okay, so this is the thing. So we could do this all day. Like we could really, let's take the whole hour and just do that. So I'm just going to do it speed. Okay. So there's a group of characteristics like logical and focused and competitive. Those are all kind of in the masculine positive or light. And you know, they're light because we, we like those characteristics. We enjoy people who embody them. The feminine is more the uh, emotional, changeable, inspired, nurture, right? Collaborative. Those are all feminine characteristics. Now, again, I know everybody on this call is both competitive and collaborative, is focused and spontaneous. That's just an example of you moving between the masculine and feminine, okay? So that, that's the light. 
or the positive, if you would. Of course, there's the shadow or the dark, however way you want to frame it for yourself. So some dark ones would be closed, um, bitchy. That's a really popular dark, negative feminine one. Again, can men be bitchy? Yes. It's not great. It's about as not great as when, <laughs> when, when women are bitchy, right? It's, it's, it's just negative, okay? Um, let's see, closed, uh, violent, uh, hysterical. Those are some other ones. Um, submissive, um, grumpy. That would be the masculine equivalent to bitchy, by the way. Um, naggy, yeah. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> Whiny. Yes, that's also on the feminine side. So again, this takes a little bit of mastery, but I just want you to think about right now when it comes to relationships. So if you're in, an, uh, you know, whether you're with a couple right now, if you're in a relationship with someone else or just with your family, I want you to think about what energy are you running at home right now? Are you in the light? And it doesn't really matter if you identify more as what is kind of your home court, if you would, where you feel you're at your best, right? Somewhere in the masculine or feminine, you feel kind of home, uh, wherever that is for you. And again, it doesn't matter if you're man or woman or gender neutral. It just, where's your home? You know, you know where it is, where you really are at your best. For me, it's in this feminine light. But for you, it might be somewhere totally different. So I want you to think about what energy are you running at home right now? Where are you? Are you in the light? Are you in the shadow? Where, are, where is that energy? And if you're in having relationship challenges right now, that's the very first question I ask people. I said, what energy are you in? And one of the first things people say to me is, um, well, I'm, you know, like for example, I'll use myself as an example. Uh, when my husband and I were having our challenges, I was so dark. I was way down here. I was totally bitchy, bitch, bitch, bitchy, whiny, hysterical, you name it. I was all here. And guess, guess what I was doing while I was there? I was blaming him. I'm like, well, well, he's over here. Like my husband was all, was all closed and shut down. And, you know, he wasn't being a great guy either. But I was, I was joining him in the feminine dark, which was, as you can imagine, not helpful. And so I chose to go to the light. I'm like, okay, well, the only thing's going to save this relationship is if somebody does something about it. So I can wait for him or them, her, him, whoever you're waiting for. If you're waiting for your partner to get nicer, yes, mirroring, exactly. We do that. So we have someone in our life that we have challenges with and they come at us and they're you know, laying on the judgment, laying on the guilt trip, laying on whatever they do lay on. They're being not nice, not kind. And so we, re we react to them by being not nice, kind, and judgy back. Oh yeah, we'll take that. And that's how relationships unravel. And so I suggest if you're having a relationship season of challenge right now, is to stay in the light. Do things for yourself that keep you in that light. Masculine or feminine, I don't care which it is, but get yourself to the light. That's your job. They have their own job. It's their job to get themselves to the light. But guess what? They're, they might not, they might be really struggling there. They're down in the weeds. Well, the best thing you can do is, is model, invite them. And if you want to influence your relationship, and I suggest you do, if you're on this call, it's because you're the most conscious person in this relationship. And I always say the most conscious person goes first. Invite your partner, invite your people by your behavior, not by demanding it or telling them to, you know, like I've heard, you know, so many couples, I've coached so many couples and they're like, well, I, I told him to get his ass up to the light. <laughs> Which, which is not, it's not work, it doesn't work that way. You cannot demand that your loved ones get their butts to the light. Only you can get your butt to the light. That's how it works. Okay. I mean, I'm scared about the time. Okay. Well, you're, fine. you're fine. But I, but that's it. So there's a natural segue then. So, because one of the things I see people do is 
we, we have a session with a coach. We spend a weekend at a personal development seminar. Yep. We hear some language, we hear some rhetoric, and then all of a sudden we think yes. that we're the experts in teaching and facilitating. Can you talk about how to communicate in a way that is non-threatening so it's not something along the lines of, well, Beth, right now you're really showing up in your feminine dark because that's obviously mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. going to cultivate forward movement. So can you, can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's hard, you know, uh, I learned this the hard way, like probably most of you, um, you know, because I would go to all the personal development stuff and come home to my husband and, um, you know, just, yeah, tell him, you know, how enlightened he was, um, not helpful, um, and not kind and not loving. So what I suggest is just to show your excitement is okay and say, I've learned this great thing. I'm so like, let's say it's the formula. When you get off this call, you I learned this beautiful thing today. Would you like to sh learn it with me? Right? And that's the perfect because I say, I'm giving you the video series. You can say, I was given this free video series. Do you want to watch it with me? And invite them. And it doesn't have to be on your timeline, which is going to get us into the next part of the formula in a second here. Um, but just say, would you, would you like to watch it with me? I'm excited about it. And let them have the right to say yes or no. And when they feel like sitting with you. And that's, you know, just start there. The other, you know, really the very, very, very best way thing you can do is just practice it. Believe me, your partner actually doesn't have to learn it. My husband didn't learn it at first. You know what he got to do? He got to experience it from me. He was like, suddenly I was being nicer. Suddenly I was being kinder. Suddenly I was in my light feminine. Suddenly I was in doing different things in our relationship. And he was like, like it got his attention, right? He was like, you know how someone's really nice to you? Like when I do that to my kids and they're like, what do you want? <laughs> it was, it got his curiosity. He was like, um, why are you being so nice? What's going on? I thought we we're fighting. Are we in the verge of a divorce? What's happening? Right. <laughs> and, and that is what changed. And once my, once I started being different, guess what? It was like, it's, he started moving up to the light without me demanding him to be there or even learn, you know, any of this stuff, you know, on, you know, unfortunately it is an occupational hazard at my house that he does get, um, relationship coaching unsolicited on a regular, but, <laughs> Um, but I try, I try very, very hard not to be the coach. Does that help, Zach? Is that, is yeah, that? That's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. And I just want to give a little disclaimer for those of you that maybe are not, and, and Beth said this, but I just want to make sure you hear loud and clear. Like maybe you're not in a quote unquote romantic relationship, but these energies apply to all relationships that you're in, including the relationship that you're in with yourself. Right. So being aware of our own energy and how we treat ourselves and how we're showing up in our own energy just for ourselves, it's also applicable. So I just want you guys to recognize that. Right. It's not just about, well, I don't have a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever it may be, or a husband or a wife. That's irrelevant. Right. Energy is everything no matter what. Yeah, Beth? Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and you know, at the real core of all of this work, right, that we do, the work, you know, as they say in this profession in this field. Um, it's always about your relationship with yourself, right? It, it always begins there. So, you know, I always say the greatest influence of any relationship is the, is, is you, and you cannot be a relationship influencer in your life unless you yourself have got your own kind of stuff together. So you're, you're absolutely right. This formula, um, should begin. It did begin for me with me. I had to get myself happy. I had to get myself to the light. I had to think about how I was speaking to my husband, you know, which, um, you know, one of the things like the, one of the greatest predictors, by the way, do you know, uh, have you ever heard the statistic about what's the greatest predictor of a divorce? So the Gottman Institute, which have been, you know, studying, uh, I think they're based out of Seattle, um, you know, thousands and thousands of couples, they have this love lab, can you imagine? So imagine doing this where you go into the love lab and they film you and you and your partner for a weekend. And at the end of the weekend, they say, you're totally going to get a divorce. <laughs> and they know, they know how to, any couple, 
they can tell you're you're on the you're on the you're on the track for divorce. And one of the key re ways that you can tell somebody is on the trajectory of a divorce or not is the ratio of positive to negative interactions. So this is actually a formula, not the relationship formula. This is now the Gottman formula, but they actually can quantify. So even if you don't remember the relationship formula, think about what is your, your ratio of positive to negative interactions with the people that you're in quarantine with right now, including yourself, maybe you're home alone. Are you being kind to you? Um, so if it should be, according to the math and the Gottman people, five to one at a minimum, five to one of positive versus negative. So just be thinking about that, right? Well, we're all kind of tense and we're all kind of can be bitchy and we're all whatever, you know, perfect example. I was, I was, um, you know, I was driving the other day and my husband used my vehicle and I, then I went out to use it. I was going to hike with the dogs and I always, I'm a, I'm a neurotic about water. I'm super hydrator. And I always leave two bottles of water in my van. And when I went into my vehicle, it was empty. And my instinct was like, Oh, I'm going to send my husband this text, you know, this crappy, like you pizza. Thanks for, thanks for nothing. Thanks for leaving me no water in my vehicle. And I thought to myself, and it literally, sometimes it only takes a second to do this. And I don't always do this well every time, but I have to say yesterday I did. So I'm proud of myself. And I just texted him and I said, Hey, just, just, a little, just a little thing. If you could remember to fill up the water bottles, I'm out here with the dogs. And he's like, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Sorry, babe. We don't, but I could have, this is just as easily sent him a snippy, bitchy thing. And that's literally how easy it is to just do a positive. So I'm still giving him negative feedback, but it, I'll, it just takes a second to go, you know what, would you mind just filling those things back up versus God, you're insensitive. God, you're selfish. Oh my God. You know, it's, it's not that hard. Which okay. is perfect because then that runs into the B, right? Because now we're talking about the next, the next part of the formula. Okay, thank you. Thank goodness you're on track here, Zach. What would I do with I got, I mean, I mean, well, I, I was born with big ears, so just inherently. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's the B. Back to the formula. So we're back to regular programming. Sorry, I digress. So um, the V stands for value. Value. So again, back to thinking about where do you identify kind of as your home? Are you, do you identify more in the masculine or feminine? You say neither, you know, I don't know. I haven't quite figured out all the nuances of gender neutral, but I still believe that there's a, there's a masculine and feminine that you feel at home. Uh, if you don't tell me otherwise, I'd love to learn even better this formula for all. Um, but coming back to that from a masculine and feminine um, standpoint, the masculine and the feminine both have a value that they literally will kill or be killed to keep. It is, it is that important. And this value, so for the masculine, I know that, you know, there's people on the call who know the answer to this. So I'm not going to make, turn this into a pop quiz here. I'm just going to tell you. So the highest value to the masculine is freedom. The highest value to the feminine is safety. So just check in even your own body if you go, oh, like so many people will be like, ah, that makes so much sense. And here's the kind of different, the nuances of this. At every level, yes, of course, yes, I'm so glad, Stephanie. So it's you're like, oh, right. So think of it, if you identify with either freedom or safety as your value, I want you to think about what happens when that is taken away. Like for example, during a pandemic, when we're all freaking out here, right? So you think about financial freedom, emotional freedom, physical freedom, spiritual freedom, sexual freedom. I mean, this is wreaking havoc on the poor tenders out there. I mean, I don't know, people can't even get a date right now for the poor daters, you know? So, all of those freedoms matter. And when you're not, so from the masculine, when they can't have that freedom, it is crazy making. 
right? I mean, you know, think of the cry of Braveheart, right? You know, freedom! That is the masculine cry. Give me freedom. And so in relationships, so let's bring it down to the more domestic realm. I can't tell you how many women say to me, oh my God, my husband's free. He can do whatever he wants. He goes golfing with his friends and da, 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 right? Like, and that's great. I, I hope that's true that you're in your relationship. Your partner can do what they want and spend time with who they want and hang out with who they want and go away for the weekends with who they want. But it's also more the subtlety. So for example, telling someone who runs a lot of masculine energy, whose home is their masculine, uh, how and when to do something is one of the easiest violations. Could you do that right now? And usually with that tone. Uh, I asked you to pick up that garbage now. I need this now. Um, are you kidding me? I, you know, all the things, right? The tone, do you hear the tone? Because we usually violate the value with negative, with dark energy. So you see how they, right? And we all do this. We all do this. We demand, we demand our partners. I mean, I can only speak to my, I'm in a heterosexual relationship. So my example is with my husband, Ben, and I'm sure if he were here, um, he would um, be happy to tell you how many times I have violated this formula, right? Where I've told him, you must do, I need you to do this right now. Now, I'm not saying that things can't have time limiting, but when they do, just ask, again, from a light place. And I'll say, hey, it would really, it would really be great if this could be done sooner than later. Or I, this has a bit of a timeline. This is, this is going to expire. It, you know, or this, the garbage goes out on Thursday. Could it be done before then? It's okay to have timelines, but holy, we have a lot of work to do. I have spent, you know, a lot of, ma I'm still in mastery. There's no such thing as being done. Like, oh, I, I never screw this up anymore. But I have mastery in this, and yet I still can screw it up. So, you know, and I probably have the 10,000, and I'm still, have, you know, mess it up. So let's go back, let's think about the feminine now. So for, for anybody who identifies as feminine or really, really feels that safety, this is so key. Same goes for all the things I said about the masculine, financial safety, physical safety, emotional safety, spiritual safety, sexual safety. You take those away from somebody who's, that's their highest value, again, you'll get a crazy person. You take safety away from me or my children, oh, you know, you, health hath no fury, right? I will fight you. I will fight, 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 or I will flight, fight, flight. I will, I will, it's one of the two, but that will trigger every primal reaction. And so just from a moment here, because I know safety is so, so, so huge right now. And people are feeling unsafe. We got the coronavirus. We feel like the everyone in the world is coming. It's like the this black cloud crawling across our planet right now. And people aren't feeling safe. And I get that. And so if you are feeling a little unsettled by that, this is one of the reasons. And so as our in partners, Right? We can come together in our partnerships, in our families, and help create safety. That's why, we're, that's why everyone's saying, stay home. Get in your little house. Huddle together. Um, and that safety is, is going to make a big difference. Emotional safety is massive, which so many people don't understand. It's just as important as physical safety or financial safety. It's about how do you treat your person when they're sharing something vulnerable with you? I can't tell you, you know, um, you know, when, you know, I've coached couples that have said, oh, I came home and I was crying and I was so sad and I was upset about everything. And, and, you know, my husband just said, just get over it. Why are you, why are you upset about that? Why are you freaking out about that? And what's the matter with you? You're being so stupid, right? In that moment, They've just taken the emotional safety from their partner. And it's so, it's, it's so important to be tender. And I get that the masculine, whoo, 
the masculine loves to fix. The masculine wants to get in there with the solution. They want to help and like, ah, let me, I got it, I got it. This is what you got to do. Just unfriend that person. Or this is what you got to do. Just tell your mother, just go to hell, right? The masculine has all the solutions. And I get that. And they're helpful. But in the moment, if you have a partner who's, you know, creates some safety around that, just, just hold the space for a second and say, oh my gosh, that sounds, <laughs> wow, that's a lot. You're feeling like you're, I, that's a lot. How are you, how are you doing? Feeling all that? Like, what can I do? Do you need me just to listen? Do you need a hug? Can I run you a bath? I do have some ideas if you want some solutions. <laughs> it's okay to say that, but let, just like the masculine wants the how and the when, let the feminine guide you. Invite, invite her and say, listen, I, I, what would help you? You know, and if it happens to be, you know, the feminine loves menus, like we like options, you know, we love, you know, all of the above, you know, just give us a little menu. You know, with my husband, said, what do you need? You bath, hug, you know, some alone time, a glass of wine, some dinner. I'm like, yes, yes to all of the above. That would be very helpful. Okay, does that make sense? Zach, do you have any thoughts on that or feedback or? Oh, you nailed it. I mean, I know one for me, I, I obviously run a, a fair amount of masculine energy and even and I have, you know, put these things into play. And I know for me, and this goes out to those of you that do run masculine energy, what I've learned is the question of what can I do typically isn't as supportive because it's not about doing or saving or anything like that. And that's what I've learned. And so the question I love to ask is more along the lines of what you did, which is how can I support you right now? Or what mm -hmm. would feel good for you in this moment? Or what would be most loving for you right now? And I've yeah. found that to be really valuable. I, and even though I, I ask that all the time, right? I ask that all the time. Is mm -hmm. how can I support you right now? How can I, you know, what, you know, what would that look like? Yes. And, and here's the thing. And, and I love that you, you use that question over and over. Um, you know, and, and just, you know, for, for, for the man on the call that say, you know, they've, they've called me and said, listen, I asked her what she needed. And she said, I don't know. <laughs> she bit my head off. She said, I don't freaking know. If you knew me, you would know, right? Like, and just know that that's the feminine. She's just in, she's just in the, she's just in a little storm, right? And that's when you can go, okay, well, I'm just going to offer some ideas and see if maybe that works. So don't, don't be worried if the, she can't always identify what she needs. She might just say, I don't know. Then you say, well, I'm right here. And just like literally put your arms around her if you can, because that is the, you know, sometimes just physically touching her is, is so great. Right. And to say, just come here, come here. And let me, let me hold you. Right. That can be a beautiful thing with no words. Just say, I, I got you. I don't know what we're going to do either. I don't have all the answers either. I don't know what you need, but I'm right here. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing um, that you can do. And in fact, I would recommend, you know, in this, again, you know, this is kind of the what to do in the chaos here, um, as Eden and Zach have, have asked me to speak to, hug more, touch more, cuddle more, right? Because when we're freaking out about the world, we're in our heads, right? When we're watching news or we can't get off our social media feeds and our heads are overwhelmed it's about you know can you get in your body and one of the most beautiful ways you can get in your body is by touching so you know so, real quick, so that begs the question beth for some people that are kind of riding solo through this experience yeah. and they really love physical touch and they kind yeah. of depend on that what are some practices and then we'll move on to um we'll move on to see of course but what are some practices okay. that they can implement yeah well i i thought you might ask that question so um Again, you have to find what works for you, you know, like this. This is just the, as I said, the banana split buffet. So you can take what you, take what serves you and leave the rest. But I really invite you to find what works for you. So I'll tell you what's been working for me right now. And I'm a little bit of an alliteration fan. So um, they do all start with the letter P. So um, this is my thing. So I say stick with the three P's right now. The three P's. So First P, pause, 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 pause. In fact, I'm seeing my office. I'll show you. This is my favorite thing right now. Can you see it? 
This is my meditation cushion. And in the last year or so, I've been doing a lot more of it, sitting on it. In the last week or so, I, I probably sit on this thing <laughs> all the time, all the time. Um, pause, just sit and do nothing. You don't have to sit on a medication cushion like me, but I, it's, it's lovely. Um, it, to me, my, my, one of my teachers, she's so beautiful. She's like a Buddhist doctorate. I, like she's crazy, um, beautiful. And she, even when I come and practice with her in, our, in a group, which we can't do right now, we can only do it virtually. But when I was practicing with her in a group, she would say this, she'd say, treat your cushion as sacred. It holds your whole life. Oh, I was like, so blessed. Anyway, so find a spot in your home, even if it's totally crazy, you've got eight kids, I, whatever, like find a closet and sit in it. Find some time for just you and don't worry about it. Your head will race. Your mind will think of things. It's okay. You know, I like just try to like, just let them go by kind of like as if you're sitting by a river and all the logs are all your thoughts. It's just, just sit there and ground yourself down. Pause, 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 and connect to that part of yourself that is the, that is wise. <coughs> hey. Next one, purpose. Find something in your day that gives you purpose. So again, you could be doing this all by yourself. So many people right now are trying to figure out how to work. Many people have the advantage that I already work from home, you know, but can you find more purpose right now in everything? The beautiful gift of quarantine, if you would, is that, um, is that, you know, we're all cooking at home right now. It's so beautiful. And I find myself even more so um, setting the table, lighting candles, putting out the nice plates and china and glasses um and we're just gathering at the table so even meals so even if you live alone set your table dress up bring out the crystal bring out grandma's china light a candle make just create more purpose in your everyday rituals whether it's work food cleaning your house. I just cleaned my office yesterday. It feels so good. That's another really purposeful thing you can do if you're feeling anxious and funky energy. Declutter. Start with a drawer. Start with your bathroom drawer, a kitchen drawer, or your office drawer where you shove everything. You know those ones? We, I know you have them. And clean that out. So do purposeful things. If you can, offer your work online if you're able to you know i have a couple of yoga studios that i work with here uh in Kelowna and a sister studio in in seattle and you know i just said i said you know they're like we, when they close their doors which they were so sad to do because they're like we know people need to gather and do yoga right now and i'm like go online and literally the next day every class at every both studios was online so um, anyways, I'm not going to do coaching on how to make your business online right now, but try to, it's, it's hard. I slipped down there. I slipped down that slope, but I came back. I came back, Zach. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, hey, can't help it. Can't help who you are. It's great. I cannot help myself. Great. So purpose. So pause, purpose. And here's the last one. Can you guess? Come on. Guess the last P. Can you guess? Yes. Stephanie, play. Exactly. We must find things, ways that we can create joy right now, especially right now. And if you're talking about the formula, if you want to get into the light and you're like, I don't know how to get there. I'm so cranky about everything. I'm so scared about everything. I'm so freaked out about everything. You must get there somehow. And one of the easiest ways is, is to find ways to play. So be silly. Dance around your living room. If you have any animals, they're very, very great play coaches. You know, we've got a cat that is, I mean, she's absolutely crazy. Uh, and 
that cat gives me so much joy. I mean, I'm lucky. I've got cats, chickens, dogs. I mean, I got a lot of people I can play with around here. Um, even if my humans don't feel like playing sorry with me, which we've been doing a lot of board games. So that's another thing. Play with the people in your home. This is such a beautiful opportunity to create some rituals around play. You know, my, uh, my husband and I actually, um, we, we don't, this is not a new pandemic thing. We have this really beautiful ritual of playing games with each other. And it used to be backgammon. We were really big into backgammon, but we've changed lately. We're all about crib right now. And literally it used to be more of a weekend thing if the days were a bit busier, but lately in the last month or so, uh, even before all the world went topsy turvy, um, we started getting up early he always brings coffee and we play crib every morning for breakfast. It's so fun. It's just, it's this beautiful thing. So it, it has this, it has like a triple bazillion um, purpose. There's some play, it's some fun. We connect with each other. We have conversation. It's light. And I know, by the way, if we're fighting, we don't play. There's no crib. There's no backgammon. And I, it's, it's, almost, it's almost a litmus test for me. It's almost a bigger litmus test for me than whether or not we're having sex. <laughs> if we stop playing, I know we're disconnected. I know it. And so this is a great opportunity for you if you want to have create, use this quarantine actually to make your relationships even more extraordinary. I'm not saying this is a great thing. Nobody would say, oh, I'm so happy the pandemic showed up. But I do think we can use it. I do think things, I don't believe like, oh, this is karma and all, you know, what I don't know about that. But I do know that everything in our life can be used for good. Even the most horrific things can be used for good. And you see that everywhere. So I would say use this time for good. Use this time to pause and connect with yourself. Use this time to be purposeful and create something that you've been meaning to create. Use this time to play with the people that love you. Okay, those are my three Ps. Those three Ps are great because then the three Ps then segue into C. And why is C so important? Okay, so the C is, stands for currency. So we love to get uh, paid, right? Right now we really would love a lot of checks right now and who wouldn't want just a little extra check in the bank but relationship currency is like that we look to be paid in a way so we're looking for certain things from our currency so again coming back to this masculine feminine so come back to the masculine and feminine um vein here for a minute and so the currency of the masculine yes oh this is so great thank you zach can you be on every call I do, every webinar? You're just such a great person. First of all, you introduce me beautifully. And now you're so helpful in the chat because that always throws me off. God bless Zach. Okay, so here's the thing. The currency of the masculine is appreciation and trust. It's so easy to give. And I got to say, so many people mess it up. It's just appreciation and trust so what that looks like is just by saying you know thank you thank you thank you for doing that thank you for offering i appreciate that and again it's not fake this is really important and it's and again this is where the formula comes together there's no tone thank you thanks for doing that <laughs> that's not appreciation it has to be felt from the heart you know like I'll give you a beautiful example of my husband who, uh, you know, I have to say is, uh, you know, is in his masculine right now because, you know, things are going on and, and, um, you know, I have a bit of an autoimmune condition. So I have Graves disease, which puts me in that category of people with, you know, at risk, you know, I'm like me and the old people, um, uh, should not, should not contract the coronavirus. <laughs> And my husband, he's doing everything. He's like, you stay home, you stay inside. I'm going grocery shopping. I'm going to go do the things. I'm going out that needs to go out. All I do is go take the dogs. 
That's all I'm doing right now and working. I'm coaching, I'm working, and I'm walking my dogs. I just, it makes me emotional to think about it. We are bringing our, our daughters away at college and she's coming home tomorrow. Again, he's like, I'm going to get her. You stay home. You, you do what you need to do. I'm so grateful for him being in his warrior right now. And it's so beautiful. And it's so easy for me. I could, I could, and I could just take it for granted and go, well, yeah, obviously, you know, you're stepping up. I'm stepping up. We're all doing our thing. But it, it, just to take a minute and just say thank you to the people who are really stepping up for you, around you, offering to help. There's so many beautiful offerings of help right now. It warms my heart, you know, and I just, I feel like we are in this space where we can be warm and we can be kind in how we appreciate people. You know, somebody, you know, lots of people are angry too and they're mad about people hoarding things or over shopping and all the things. And I'm like, just, it's so like, we have to just be kind. So anyways, appreciation and trust. So that's the currency of the masculine. If they say they're going to do something, give them the trust. And I know every single person has have coaches says, well, they've broken my trust so many times. It's okay. You can say, you can actually verbalize it to them, which would be really powerful and say, hey, I trust you. I trust you to do this. So if, if, some, if your husband or your spouse or partner makes you a promise, just say that to them. I, I trust that you'll do that. Thank you. That's a beautiful way to give the currency. Okay, here's the feminine. The feminine's looking for connection and protection. So again, Here's this piece. Remember, think about the, the woman who comes home and she's all jacked up and she's freaking out about everything and you just want to fix it. Don't. Just be there with her. Be there with her. Connect. And the greatest thing you can do in terms of connection, this is the easiest thing. And this is why I love coaching men so much. Because to, to be honest, and no judgment to the women I coach, because I love you too. But men are so in their masculine about this formula. They're like, oh, just do that. Got it. Love it. Right? And they're like, I say, well, try saying this. They're like, done. You know, the, as women, we want to like, you know, mix it up. We're like, well, I don't want to do that every day the same. I'm like, do it the same. Masculine are much better at this formula in so many ways because we as women we want to like we want we want to be creative about it anyways so here's the greatest thing that um people in their masculine can do if they want to connect with someone in their feminine or frankly with anybody is is to be present give the people you love right now your undivided attention give them your so if they're asking you, they come in to speak to you, they have, hey, I got something to tell you. I want to show you something. I want to whatever is literally give them your undivided attention. It is the most beautiful gift you can give, but especially to the feminine because then she will lean in. It says you matter. You're significant. What you're important to me. Even if you, I'm, you know, like, a Medusa, like a snake's coming out of my head. If my husband says, I'm listening, I'm like, oh, thank you. I soften, right? It's like the snakes come down. I'm like, you are? You're listening? Thank you. So that's connection and protection, right? Which is another, another layer of safety. And so, you know, there's a lot of people worried about jobs right now or money or whatever, you know, and there was a season where my husband and just for the record because i talk about this all the time um i have you know i have like a bazillion um release forms from my husband that says i'm allowed to talk about him when i speak about this formula but a, a few years ago my husband was in a real season of disliking his job and he would come home and he would go oh my god i'm gonna i gotta quit this job i gotta quit this job i gotta quit this job and i would lose my mind because it would, it would freak me out. I would not feel protected. I would not feel safe. I would, he's in the dark energy. Oh my gosh. 
Um, and so I would say to him, I'd say, babe, I hear you on this. I hear you that you want to not provide for our family. That's what I hear when you say I want to quit my job. So could you either tell me what your plan is so I can relax? Or if you don't know, could you go tell that to somebody else? <laughs> could you go phone Dave or Mark or like your friends? Please tell your friends. Because I need to, I need the, 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 the protection thing is really important. You cannot completely freak me out because that's what I'll do. When I hear I'm quitting my job, I'm like, you're not providing for the family anymore. Um, and then I'm not at my best, which then will, the whole formula either can fall apart or come together. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm going to pause now, Zach. Well, that's perfect. So we do this, right? So we have E plus V plus C equals, just lay it on them. What's the big, what's the big payoff? Oh, that it's happy, happy ever after happiness. I, you know how often I've forgotten to actually say what the H is when I taught this so often, but yeah, that will all be, yeah. But harmony. Yeah, for sure. Matthew, beautiful. It good things, any good H put it in there. Happily ever after harmony, hope, um, so many relationships that don't have hope. I, this, the H could be for hope because I, I can't tell you that when people learn this and, and don't feel bad if you're having, if your mind is blown right now and you're like, Holy crap, I can't believe this. Um, just know that this is, it's not taught enough. One of these days I'm going to create, maybe this is what I'm going to do in the pandemic is actually going to write my course and my book or something. But in the meantime, I'm just going to speak it. Keep speaking my form, this formula. Healing. Ah, oh, see, whatever good H, just put them together. Because right now we need, the world needs this. We need this. We need us to, we need to use this time when we're hunkered down together to be good to each other. And to recognize that this, when we're in our stress, that we can bring, uh, we can bring the love, right? Like one of my favorite authors, uh, is Marianne Williamson, who wrote this beautiful book, Return to Love. And she said, there's two types of behavior. And it's kind of her version of The Course of Miracles, which I could never get through, but I loved Return to Love. So if you can't read The Course of Miracles, it's a good backup book. Because <laughs> the, sure. the Course of Miracles is dense. It's, it's like the Bible. Like, it's a whole like, other language too. It's like scripture. It's really tough. Yeah. Oh, it's so tough. I, I could never get through it. Yeah. But, but Return to Love, you know, I'm sure Marianne wouldn't appreciate this, but it's like Course in Miracles for Dummies. I, I loved it for that. Anyways, she says this. She says, there's only two types of behavior. There's love and there's calls for love. That's it. So that's amazing. So, so thank you, Beth, so much. We're at the top of the hour. And one thing I want to communicate, guys, I'm not a parent, right? I'm not oh. a parent, but I am a child. That's okay. And I had the blessing of having a mother who is a world-class psychotherapist. And what I learned from my mom, from those of you guys that are parents, and Beth, feel free to you know, add to this as well. What I learned from my mom when navigating my parents' tough times was a constant sense of her showing up in a very healing, loving energy. And so I never felt threatened. I never felt unsafe. I never felt scared because my mom's presence and it's been that way consistently my entire life, one of communication and being open and, and doing this formula, which at the time she probably didn't even know existed, but, but carrying that space and her choosing yeah. to show up from yeah. a higher consciousness perspective created so much peace and safety for my brother and I, even when things were tumultuous and even when they were getting divorced. So I would just invite all of you to understand that this also, when you show up in a light energy, whether it be masculine or feminine, will impact your children in a positive way. Would you agree with that, Beth? I, I would. You know, um, I think that right now, um, you know, children are, and whether you've got fur babies or human babies, um, everybody picks up on the energy of the home. Um, so, you know, one of the best metaphors, you know, was, was Glennon Doyle used this, not, you know, just recently, um, who's another beautiful author I love. And she says, you know, right now, when, when times are uncertain, it, the best thing you can do is think of yourself as a parent, like a flight attendant. You know, when, when shit's going down on the plane, 
what do those flight attendants do? They, they, they zip out there and they're like, everybody sit down. It's okay. Right. They pass out peanuts, whatever. They keep the plane calm because if the flight attendants freak out, the whole plane is freaking out. Right. That's how you have to be in your family right now is to be like a flight attendant and just go, it's okay. And even if you don't, not sure if it's not okay. Just be that for your children. Say, we got this. Mm -hmm. It's going to be all right. And let's say something happens that is not okay. Like you get sick or a family member gets sick or someone you know dies, which is quite probable right now as this thing moves. Then speak to your children in language that's appropriate to them. Don't freak them. Don't be inflammatory. Don't be, just be clear. Just be honest. Like, yeah, you know, grandpa's sick right now, but he's, you know, he's, he's a fighter and we're going to pray for him or whatever you think is going to help them feel like they can do something. Let's make him a card. Let's send him a video message. Give people something to do um, so they feel valued. And, and, and that's how we're going to, we're just going to go through this day by day. So you stay, you keep your center. And that's why this formula, these practices, the play and the pause and the purpose are so important right now. Um, because your children, our children are watching us. Our, they're watching us, the, you know, and, and we have an opportunity to really, really um, move through this elegantly and gracefully um, just as much as we have the opportunity to move through this um, knot. Sweet. Well, thank you so, so much. Um, everybody, I will make the recording publicly available. We'll also figure out the best way to distribute that, um, that, that, that series that Beth talked about. You're free to do that, do with that, whatever you would like. Um, Beth, again, I just, I can't thank you enough. You know, it's just, it's such an, it's such an important time for, for people like you to, to share your truth and to share your voice and to express your wisdom and to help hold up a mirror for all the people that are watching this, whether live or recorded guys. Yes, Beth has 25 years of experience, but, but what Beth did was Beth made a choice, right? Beth made a choice to look at things in a different way, to show up in a different way, to honor herself in a different way, to honor her husband in a different way. And that's why she's able to serve you in this capacity because ultimately what she did was she acknowledged what was going on in her life. And then she decided to do the work and we're all gifted with that same exact opportunity so beth again thank you for showing up for those of you guys that got on the call what a gift to all of us as well right beth any any last words you want to wrap with you're just such a gift in our life thank you so much for doing this it's my absolute i am feeling a little guilty because i said we would do some q a and and we ran out of time so um we can we'll do an on we can do an encore anytime Sweet. so i i just want to send everybody um, all my love, all my health, all my vibes, all my prayers. Um, yeah. I, and, and to you and, and Eden, Eden, I, especially to you who are not well today, extra love for you. Um, yeah. Th thanks for, thanks for, it's just so beautiful to see all your faces. You're the best. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for investing your time with us today. We love all of you. Thanks again, Beth. Show Beth some love in the chat box if you haven't already. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye.